and solar eclipses make animals do very strange things. This is on The Conversation by Steve Portugal. He's a reader in animal biology and physiology at Royal Holloway in, in the UK, London. Now we know insects, for example, take flight, birds take flight, uh, reptiles, especially snakes, to crawl out of the ground and uh, crawl up the sides of the buildings, on the roof of houses. And, and of course, dogs hear it and uh, they start barking or howling. Now, for most animals, the structure of their day and indeed their year depends on the light-dark cycle. These regular and rhythmic cycles in the length of days tell animals when they should be foraging, when they should be asleep, when it's time to migrate, and when it's time to breed. breed. Animals can tell all this from how many hours of daylight they experience, but the moon cycles also strongly influence their behavior. The lunar synodic cycle is the moon's regularly regular journey from full moon to full moon, again over 28 nights, causes changes in the Earth's magnetic field. The moon's gravitational pull on Earth and light levels at night. Many species can detect this and use it to synchronize their breeding. Mass spawning in coral seas, tens of millions of eggs released at once in reefs to coincide with full or new moons. But what happens to animals when the moon or the sun does something unusual or unexpected, such as an eclipse? What happens during solar eclipses? Of all the cosmic events, solar eclipses prompt perhaps the biggest change in animal behavior. Puzzled animals that are active during the day head back to their nighttime abodes, while nocturnal animals think they've overslept. The solar eclipse occurs when the sun, moon, and earth are aligned on the same axis so that the moon completely blocks the sun. Around the world, unusual incidences of behavior are usually reported while everyone else is watching the eclipse. Some spider species begin to break down their webs during an eclipse, as they typically do at the end of the day. Once the eclipse has passed, they begin to rebuild them again, possibly lamenting the lack of rest in between. Similarly, fish and birds that are active during the day head for their nighttime resting places, while nocturnal bats appear, seemingly, seemingly tricked by the sudden darkness. Hippos in Zimbabwe were observed leaving their rivers during an eclipse, heading towards their nocturnal feeding grounds only on dry land. And midway through their departure, the eclipse passes, daylight returns, and the hippos abort their efforts. The animals appeared agitated and stressed following the eclipse for the remainder of the day. The moon the lunar eclipse happens when the moon, earth, and the sun are very closely aligned with the earth positioning between the two as the moon passes directly behind us. Earth blocks sunlight from directly reaching the moon, causing reddish glow to appear. These so-called blood moons can only occur when there is a full moon, so it's difficult to separate the impacts that lunar eclipses have on animals compared to a standard full moon. A study in 2010 discovered that Azara's owl monkeys, a typically nocturnal species, stopped foraging in Argentina during a lunar eclipse as their world became suddenly darker. They may have struggled to see their food or felt too unnerved to move safely through the trees. Around three times a year, a supermoon occurs, which is when a full moon coincides with perigee, the point at which the moon is closest to the Earth. The moon's distance to Earth varies throughout the month because the moon's orbit is not a perfect circle. During a perigee event, the moon is about 46,000 kilometers closer to Earth than during apogee when the moon is furthest from Earth. During a supermoon, light levels at night are around 30% brighter than at any point in the moon's normal uh, monthly cycle and it appears much larger in the sky. Our recent study found that wild barnacle geese responded to the supermoon events while they 
Over winter in southwest Scotland, we find small devices. We fitted small devices to the animals which measure their behavior and found that the geese's heart rate and body temperature increased at night during supermoons when typically all that time of the day they'll be subdued. The birds didn't respond to supermoon events when the moon was hidden by heavy cloud and the night stayed quite dark. So it appears that a bit like humans, like with humans, the bright side of a supermoon woke the geese up, causing their heart rate and body temperature to increase potentially uh, in preparation for the daytime. The lunar cycle and us, people that is, human beings, for centuries, people have been fascinated about the relationship between human behavior and the lunar cycle. Many folklores and fables were connected to our interaction with the moon, the most extreme example perhaps being that of mythical beasts such as werewolves. It is not too surprising then that previously the term lunatic from the Latin lunaticus meaning of the moon was used to describe people deemed to be mentally ill, crazy, or unpredictable until 1930 when more appropriate and sensitive terms were introduced. It was once believed that the lunar cycle influenced a range of strange changes in a person's physiological and behavioral behavior of wider society, with everything from birth rate, fertility, epilepsy, and overall argumentativeness through, uh, thought to be influenced. Many still believe that incidences of violent crime and general disorder increase around the time of a full moon. A series of studies published in the late 1980s found no evidence at all of this link between the moon cycle and human behavior. The moon's influence on us might remain the stuff, the uh, stuff of legend, but the confession it sows among wild animals is very real indeed. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.